Okay, welcome to part three of this DeFi Explained series here. And in this video, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we're gonna be talking about how to actually use DeFi. We're gonna be talking about DEXs, swapping, lending and borrowing, staking, liquidity providing, farming and bridging all inside this video. So make sure that you stay tuned. And this is likely gonna be a video that you'll refer back to if you need to anytime you're going to do these actual actions. And I'll just start off by saying that if you have not seen the previous two segments, then you need to watch the previous two videos in this series in order to get this one. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's dive in. First, we're going to talk about DEXs. What are DEXs? Well, DEXs are simply decentralized exchanges, and you're probably familiar with centralized exchanges like a Coinbase or a KuCoin or a Binance, but a decentralized exchange just basically removes this centralized party and instead allows for a peer-to-peer -peer trading sort of scenario. So let me actually show you and draw this for you so you can see how this works. Okay, so here's how a DEX works. There's two users or two parties, let's say. There's one, the user or the trader in this scenario. And the second thing is there's something known as a liquidity provider. And basically the way that this works is let's say that you're wanting to make a trade. And anytime you make a trade, you're trading in pairs, right? You're trading one asset for another. In this scenario, let's say that we're trading Ethereum for USDC, okay? Now, what happens in a decentralized exchange or DEX is somebody comes and becomes the liquidity provider, meaning that they put up 50% Ethereum and 50% USDC into what's called a liquidity pool. This is the liquidity pool that people can trade out of. Now, anytime the user wants to trade ETH USDC, they have this pool of liquidity that they can trade from. And the liquidity provider that puts up their capital in order to facilitate these trading transactions, they actually earn a small percentage fee any time a trade actually happens on this DEX. So why is this great for the user? It's because there's a lot of liquidity that's available. And it's also great for the liquidity provider because they can start to earn passive income by simply putting up their money into these pools and earning transaction fees. Now, generally how it will work is on a centralized exchange, right? Like Coinbase or like, uh, you know, Binance or KuCoin, they're gonna earn all of the transaction fees or all of the trading fees. The cool thing that uh, DEXs allow for is it allows for this peer-to-peer -peer trading, which is really great. Now, that's the uh, basics of how a DEX works. These two components, the user or trader and the liquidity provider. Now, each DEX really looks the same. So once you see how it works on one ecosystem, they look pretty much the exact same thing on any other ecosystem. There's usually a swapping feature, which is like a trading feature. There's a place to provide liquidity. There's a place to stake and a place to farm. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and then I'll show you how do we actually do these different actions. So here's Uniswap. This is on the Ethereum blockchain. You can see there's a simple place to swap from one asset into another asset. So we could swap from Ethereum to Aave, right? We could also pool our funds right here. PancakeSwap is on the Binance Smart Chain and it looks very similar, right? It has the ability to swap, which is these trades that are happening. We have the ability to uh, provide liquidity stake, all of this sort of stuff. Loop.Markets, this is for the Terra ecosystem and it looks really quite similar. If you go into their app, you can see that they have a swapping feature just like pretty much every single DEX does. They have a place where you can pull your funds together to provide liquidity. They have farms, a place to stake. Trader Joe, this is on Avalanche Network. It looks the exact same. Quick Swap, this is on the Matic Network. Spooky Swap, this is on the Phantom Network. And you get the idea. They all look the same. And once you understand how to operate on one of these platforms, you'll know how to operate on pretty much all of them. So basically, you just select which asset you'd like to swap from and which asset you'd like to swap into. So let's say, for example, you know, I want to swap some uh, AVAX into USDC in this scenario here. Uh, then I would just decide how much do I want to swap. Let's say that I want to do 0.1 AVAX into USDC. And then all I do is I just click swap. I'll confirm the swap. And then I'll just confirm it on my MetaMask. And there you have it. Okay. And in just a second, the swap will have happened. And I've swapped my AVAX for USDC in this scenario. And that's how you perform a swap.
The next thing that I'm going to show you how to do is how to lend and borrow, which is an essential component to DeFi and is really, really powerful because you can now become your own bank. You can put your assets up as collateral, meaning that you're lending your money out to other people like a bank does. You're able to earn interest on it and you can get a loan against your assets anytime, no credit checks within an instant, no need for phone calls, no need for uh, credit checks, no need for proof of income, any of that. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now, the largest um, platform for lending and borrowing is actually something called Aave. And once you understand how to use Aave, you'll understand how to use all other uh, lending and borrowing platforms. But Aave is like a DeFi bank. And basically, the way that it works is there's different markets. So you can use it on the Ethereum ecosystem, Polygon, and also Avalanche Network. Now, I've just selected Avalanche here. And if you come down here, you can actually see the different assets that you can deposit and the different assets that you can borrow. So you can see that you could, you know, put up, uh, you know, Aave, you could put up USDC, USDT, wrapped Bitcoin, um, also uh, Avalanche. So, so for example, if you deposit your Avalanche, you learn 1.69% plus an additional 6.87% in the Avalanche token. So you'll basically get paid, you know, roughly, what is that? Seven, almost 9% for putting your money up here as uh, collateral and allowing other people to borrow it. Now, in order to borrow, you're going to have to pay 5.7% and uh, you get paid 0.19% in uh, the Aave token. So this is always, excuse me, the Avalanche token. So this is always uh, fluctuating as time goes on and it's a supply and demand based thing. But let's just say, for example, we want to deposit uh, Avalanche here. It's really simple. All you do is you click on deposit, you select the amount that you want, and I'll just do this for demonstration purposes. And you can go ahead and click deposit. You confirm the transaction here. And then in just a second, you've deposited some funds onto Aave. Okay, so then I can come back here to my dashboard and I can see my AVAX balance here, which is really great. And the cool part about this is, is that now I can actually take a loan out against it. So I could just click on borrow here or I could click on it borrow here and I just select whatever asset that I wanna borrow. Let's say that I wanna borrow uh, you know, USDC because I only have to pay 3.24%, but I also get paid 1%. So it's like a 2% for a loan, which is really great. So I'll just click here and then I can decide how much I actually want to borrow. Now, if you come all the way down here, then this is really, really risky. But if I come somewhere around like, you know, uh, I would say somewhere around like, you know, two, two and a half, I don't know, somewhere around that's good. So uh, I'm going to borrow $3,900. I'll just go ahead and click continue. I'll agree to the variable APY, which basically means that the rates can change. And then I'll just go ahead and click borrow and confirm the transaction in my MetaMask. And then in literally like under 30 seconds, I was able to get a loan, which is amazing, which is usually a very complex thing to do at a traditional system. So ta-da, it went through. And then I can just go click on my dashboard here. And if I just refresh this, it'll show up and I'll be able to see both the money that I've deposited as well as the loan that I've taken out right here. Okay, so I can always see that. I can see my health factor here is green, which is great. And I can always repay the loan pretty much instantaneously just by clicking that, click max, and then I repay the loan. Why is this so powerful? This is so powerful because it allows you to take your assets that you'd normally be holding on to long term to be able to earn a little bit of interest on them and to be able to create more stable coins or more whatever you want. And uh, this basically allows you to double dip. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you how to do is how to stake. And what does staking mean? It basically means I'm going to allocate my funds here. And in return for allocating these funds, I'm actually going to get paid rewards or paid passive income. And staking is a really powerful thing because it allows you to take, again, your idle sitting assets and to earn passive income on them. So I'll just show you how to do this on Trader Joe. Uh, their native token is called Joe. And this is how I can earn 35% additional on the Joe tokens that I would be earning. Okay. And in the next video, I'll talk more about strategy, but just to show you how simple this is, I have some Joe tokens. So if you don't have Joe token, you'd need to go buy it. Remember how we swapped? You would need to go buy some. And then I can just go ahead in here and I can click on stake. And basically I'll just confirm the transaction like you've seen me do already. And in just a second after the pending transaction goes through, I'll now be earning 35% APR on my Joe token simply for staking it on the Trader Joe decks. This is how staking works. It's very similar across a lot of different platforms.
Other places that you can stake your assets are places like Lido.fi, where you can stake your Ethereum and earn 4.7%, your Terra and earn 7.9%, your Solana and earn 5.9%. Um, so there's a lot of different places where you can stake your assets. It works very, very similarly. And I'll show you more about how to find the best places to stake in the next video. Okay, so next thing, I'm gonna show you how do you provide liquidity. Now, back to this little diagram here. Remember, we're talking about how you could be a user or a trader. You could also be something called a liquidity provider, where if we provide our funds then to this liquidity pool, then we can earn a percent of it percentage of all trading fees. So what I'm going to show you how to do right now is how to become a liquidity provider. This is a great way to put your assets to work to start earning another source of passive income. Now, generally in order to do this, we basically need to provide 50% of one asset and 50% of another asset in order to create an LP position, which is basically just these two assets smashed together. I'll show you how this works on Trader Joe again. And then I'll, uh, once you understand how to do it on Trader Joe, you'll understand and how to do it anywhere. So if I come to Trader Joe and I click on pool, I can now see all of these different pools where I see USDC AVAX, which basically means, you know, anytime somebody's trading USDC to AVAX or swapping USDC for AVAX or AVAX for USDC, there's opportunity to provide liquidity and in return earn APR, okay? Now for this pool, you'd earn about 17%. In the past 24 hours, there's generated about $94,000 from people providing this liquidity. Uh, in the past 24 hours, there's been about $37 million that's traded between this pair. And you can see the total liquidity here of $203 million. So you can sort through here. And again, in the next video, I'm going to show you the best places to provide liquidity. But in this video, I'm going to show you how do you actually do this. So let's just take, for example, this AVAX USDT pairing, where you could earn 18% on your money, which is great meaning that if you're bullish on AVEX, then you might as well put it to work. You're put, pairing it with a stable coin, so that's uh, relatively you know, safe. And you just click on here, and I just need to provide equal parts of AVAX and equal parts USDT. So if I didn't have these two assets, then I'd need to come over here to trade, and I need to swap to make sure that I get equal parts of these two assets, right? So again, all I need to do is I need to decide how much I wanna supply here. So let's just say that, you know, just for example, purposes. I'm providing $15 with the USDT and an equal amount of AVAX, right? And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to confirm here. I'm going to click supply and then I'll just confirm the transaction on my MetaMask. And in just a few seconds, I'll provide liquidity and I'll get what's called LP tokens. And LP tokens are basically just AVAX USDT smashed together. Okay. It's called an LP token. LP stands for liquidity pool or liquidity providing. Um, and there you can see that I've actually got it. So you can see my percentage of the pool is really, really small, obviously. Um, I can see my pooled uh, USDT and my pooled AVAX here. And now I'm earning 17.329%, right? Right here. And that's really great and all. And how do I get paid this? I actually get paid equal parts back in the AVAX and equal parts back in the USDT token. So that's how I'm actually getting paid here. So that's how you provide liquidity on Trader Joe and pretty much any other decks that you're going to be using. Now let's take our gains to the next level. So that was liquidity providing, but now I'm going to show you how to do something called farming. And you may hear this term yield farming. And basically what this is, is it's DEXs will offer extra bonus incentive rewards for coming and staking your LP tokens on their deck. So for example, the DEX token here or the farm token on Trader Joe is the Joe token. So I can actually earn additional on top of that 17% that I'm earning uh, basically by coming here to the farm. So I come here to the farms and then I just want to basically look for um, the AVAX USDT pairing, which I can see the AVAX USDT pairing right here, which you saw I'm earning the 17.33%. But if I stake my liquidity, uh, my LP tokens here, I can earn an additional 14%. So that raises it from 17% uh, all the way up to 31, almost 32% by staking my LP tokens here. Okay, now this 14% is going to be coming in the Joe token. And this other position uh, is obviously getting paid in the AVAX USDT uh, pairing like we, we talked about. So how do we do this? We can just take our position here, our LP token since I already have them. And I can just go ahead and click stake. And then I'll just confirm the transaction on MetaMask. 
And in just a second, this will go through. And now I'm earning the 17% plus the additional 14% in the Joe token, which will be paid out in Joe. And anytime I want to take those tokens, I just click harvest and it'll send them directly to my MetaMask account. And that's as simple as it really is. And then when you're ready to be done with this farm, you just come in here and you click unstake and you're done with the farm. So the transaction is just went through and that's exactly how you do it. So once you understand how to do it here, you'll understand how to do it pretty much anywhere else. By the way, if this video has been helpful, considering subscribing to our channel and also make sure that you stay tuned for the next video because we're gonna actually go in and talk about the strategy. Now, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is something called bridging. And bridging is really important because Right now we have this multi-chain world, right? We have Ethereum, we have Polygon, we have Avalanche, we have Phantom, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Terra, we have Binance Smart Chain, we have all of these different ecosystems which don't really play nicely with each other a lot of the time. So you need to basically learn how to bridge your funds. And what does that mean? Let's say that I'm on a farm on Binance Smart Chain, but I want to get over to Avalanche. Well, I need to basically transfer my assets using something called a bridge. And again, just like with anything else in DeFi, once you understand how to use one bridge, you'll understand how to use pretty much all of them. So let's take a look at just a couple of them. This is the Avalanche bridge where I can bridge from say Avalanche to Ethereum, or I can also bridge from like Ethereum to Avalanche. This is called any swap bridge where basically I can just select whatever asset that I want to uh, swap. I can say I want to go from, you know, the Avalanche network to Moonbeam or wherever you want to swap to and fro. And then you just select the amount. The same thing with the Terra bridge. So let's say that I want to transfer from uh, Terra to Ethereum, or I want to go from Terra to Binance Smart Chain. You basically just say from what chain you want to swap into what chain. And then you just select whatever asset that you'd like to send. And then you basically just click the amount and then you click uh, basically just bridge. And it'll take like five to 10 minutes to do that. I'm not gonna do that here for you. It's very, very simple. I just showed you exactly how to do this. And this is how you bridge. So once you've done it one time, you'll understand basically how to do it any other time. Okay, so this was a lot, this video, but you learned the basics. These are all the things that you're gonna be doing inside of the world of decentralized finance. You may need to come back to this video. And in the next video, I'm gonna get in and actually talk about the strategy behind that. So if you'd like to see the strategy, then continue on over to the last video.